In this video, I'm going to explain Russell's paradox and why it forced mathematicians to change the definition of a set. So the old definition of a set is a set is a collection of distinct objects. And the new set definition is the same thing, but it adds that a set cannot contain an element of itself. So per the old definition of a set, it allows self-reverent sets to exist, which are sets that are one of its own elements, like A equals the set of 1, 2, and A. So before I reveal the paradox, there's two more definitions we need to understand. The first one is an extraordinary set, and Russell labeled this as any self-reference set. So as we saw just a moment ago, the set A equals 1, 2, A. The set A can, is a set that contains an element of itself. And then an ordinary set is any non-self-reference set. So an example of this is just the set B is 1, 2. Russell's paradox is formed by the question, is the set that contains all ordinary sets an ordinary set or an extraordinary set? So let's look at these one by one. So if this set is an ordinary set, since the set contains all ordinary sets and the set is an ordinary set, it must contain itself, meaning it's actually an extraordinary set, but this is a contradiction. So the set is not ordinary. Next, if the set is extraordinary, since the set is extraordinary, the set must contain itself, but the set can only contain ordinary sets. So this is a contradiction. Thus, the set can't be extraordinary either. But how can a set be neither ordinary or extraordinary? So to solve this problem, a new definition of a set was adopted, which is a set is a collection of distinct objects, none of which is the set itself, which we saw at the start of the video. And that's Russell's paradox and how it changed the definition of a set. 